A presentation of AIT. Hey, Camila. What are you doing? Besides wasting paper. Hey, Julia. Just working on some ideas. For what? Nuclear powered skateboards? No. Invisible chewing gum? No. Giant robot teddy bear? <laughs> no. See the contest? Design a mascot for the city's new minor league baseball team. Winner gets season tickets for the entire family. Wow. Yeah, you know I love baseball. But I can't come up with a good idea. If you win, you can't say I didn't help. All right, good morning. Today we are going to work on a new strategy, synthesizing. Julia, can you read me the poster? Sure. Put the pieces together to see them in a new way. The pieces are things that you learn from reading. You put them together with what you already know and sometimes with other things you've read and you end up with a new understanding. It's a different way of looking at things. For example, Remember the story Trent shared with us about his hamster tidbit? Yeah, that was funny because it was like tidbit was writing it about Trent. Yeah, you're right. Trent, would you mind reading a little bit for me? And um, Trent wrote his ideas down about a story, and we'll see how this is like synthesizing. Until I read The World According to Humphrey, I never really thought about what the world seemed like to tidbit. So I started thinking of things from her point of view. Yeah, that's synthesizing. Trent took some pieces from a book he read and put them together with what he knew about his hamster and came up with something new. That book actually changed the way Trent looks at the world. Or at least the way he looks at his hamster. <laughs> All right, today we are going to practice some steps to help us synthesize. With a candy bar wrapper? Yeah. Oh, I know what that is. It's one of those animal wrappers. Well, this one is about gorillas. So what I want you to do now is think about everything you know about gorillas. All right, now share with your neighbor, and you can spread out if you need to. I'm eager to hear what you have to share. Evan, it looked like you knew something about gorillas. They're mean, and if you make them mad, they'll crush you or maybe eat you, like in King Kong. Anything else? We talked about a gorilla named Coco, who had a pet kitten. I think the gorilla would eat the kitten. OK, well, let's see what the rapper says. These gentle giants are the largest of all primates, with males averaging 400 pounds. Hmm. Gentle giants, that sounds important. All right, let's see what else the rapper says. Gorillas are vegetarians, and some eat up to 75 pounds of food each day. Hey, they're vegetarians. That means they probably wouldn't eat me. I can see your thinking about gorillas is changing. You're taking pieces from the text and putting it together to create a new idea. So I'm going to write, won't eat me here. That's synthesizing. Gorillas have no natural enemies, yet these peaceful creatures are among our most endangered species. Miss Pingle, I think we need to write peaceful inside the circle. Yeah, that's an important idea. Okay, peaceful. I think I was wrong about gorillas. Did anyone else notice their thinking changing about gorillas? I did. Kind of, sort of. Yeah. Now turn to your neighbor and share when your thinking started to change. So what do we know now about gorillas? 
When I was thinking about King Kong, I didn't know gorillas were peaceful. At first, I thought that a gorilla would hurt me. But actually, people are hurting gorillas. Yeah, yeah by hunting them and moving on to their land. All right. Who can explain synthesizing to us in your own words? Emmett? It's when you put new information from what you read together with information that you already know. And your mind sort of stretches in a different way. That's when your thinking changes. I think it means we need to help the gorillas. Well, you know, the rapper says how we can help here. I'll leave it on the kiosk so you can read later. Today, during self-selected reading, I'm giving you each a chart like the one we used for gorillas. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two, with but one inning more to play. And then, when Codney died at first, and Barrels did the same, a pall-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. What are you reading, Camila? Casey at the bat. It's kind of a hard poem, but I really like baseball. Well, tell me more. Well, I read this article about a baseball player I really like. So, then I put down some prior knowledge about pitching and batting. Well, as you read the poem, write down any ideas that seem important to you. Then, see if you can put the pieces together. Okay. Okay. Then, from 5,000 throats and more, there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell. It pounded on the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. Wow! It's Casey! <laughs> Is that pitcher over there trying to ruin the story? <laughs> hey, kid, no autographs right now. I'm busy. I don't want an autograph. Could I ask you a few questions? Make it fast. You don't want to strike out Casey. He's a Mudville hero. Wouldn't that ruin tomorrow's story for the paper? Whose story? His story. I don't care what they write about him. I care what they write about me. I strike out Casey, and I'm the hero. A hero? To who? To who? My team, my fans. Wow, never thought about it like that. Yeah, well, go think about it somewhere else. This is the biggest day of my life. Another fastball? Or a slider. How about a hanging curveball, chest high? You probably won't hit that. <laughs> Fat chance, kid. You're not fooling me. Now go buy a hot dog or something. Eh, kids. The right two. <laughs> Come on, one more strike. You want Casey to strike out, too? Shh! Keep it down, kid. Everybody in Mudville's rooting for this guy. Do you want him to pulverize me? Don't you want him to get a hit? This is his hometown. I got nothing against Casey, but if he gets a hit, he could tie the game. So? So? A hit could mean extra innings, and I gotta rest my poor dogs. Rest your hot dogs? No, you nut. My dogs. My feet. Don't you speak English? I thought so. I've been on my feet all day. They're killing me. And I got a corn on my little toe the size of a grape. Oh, so you got corn dogs. Sorry. And sorry about your dogs, too. Yeah. I done paid a whole three bucks for a new pair of shoes, and they ain't broke in yet. I understand. But does anyone want the mighty Casey to be a hero? Go talk to the Mudville bad boy. He worships Casey. OK. Here, kid. Have a hot dog. <laughs> Thanks. Sure, kid. Sure. Hot dogs. Get your hot dogs here. I know you're rooting for Casey. Sure. 
But if he strikes out, maybe the team could see that I could be the next great player. But you're too young. Not in a few more years. Then they could be talking about the mighty Bobby. Wow. My thinking about the story sure has changed. The author was a Mudville fan, but it's really fun when you can see it from somebody else's point of view. Here we go. We have several people signed up to give their synthesis to the class today, and you've all been really creative. So let's see, we have Camila's Puppet Show about the poem, Casey at the Bat, and then Trent's podcast called Interview with Humphrey. So let's get ready and take it away, Camila. Oh, summer in this favorite land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and some are hearts are light. And some are men are laughing, and little children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. Mighty Casey has struck out. No joy? Are you kidding? That was way cool. I struck out the Mighty Casey. I better get a raise next year. Yeah, I'm happy to. Woo-wee! I've been on my feet all day selling hot dogs. Now I can finally go home and rest. Well done for a hot dog, man. Hey, would you like a free hot dog with mustard and relish? You bet. Wow, this has been the greatest day of my life. The end. Yay. All right. <laughs> wow, I've read Casey at the Bat, but I never thought about it like that. Camila personalized the poem and formed a new perspective. Maybe synthesizing isn't so hard. Yeah, like baseball. The more you practice, the better you get. Let's give Camila a hand. She really got into the book. Wow, I never thought it'd be so hard to come up with a mascot for the Addison Lake baseball team. Are you still working on that? I know all this stuff about our town. I need to combine it in some way. What's special about Addison Lake? Well, there's a lake. Of course there's a lake. Hey, remember the story of the Addison Lake dragon? Yeah, but that's a myth that it's not real. It doesn't have to be real. It's what we're known for. So you want the mascot to be a dragon? I want something that represents our team. They're strong, fast, and they're gonna beat all the other teams. A dragon is perfect. Could you work the candy factory in somehow? Hmm, the candy factory. My mom works there. My dad does too. Hey, wait, instead of fire coming out of the dragon's mouth, it could be little pieces of candy. Yeah. Like every time the team scores, the dragon could blow candy out into the stands. Great! What are the team colors? Red and blue. Could the dragon be red and blue? Hmm. Red and blue lake. Candy factory. Dragon. The Addison Lake dragons. That's putting it all together in a whole new way. It's sure to win. 